is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Presenting episode 21 of the Trivia for Kids podcast. (laughs) You forgot that part. (laughs) I'm Casey. And I'm Ren. Oh, Ren, fancy tonight. <laughs> oh, Ren, how are you today? I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> good is hard to say with a roll. You should have said ravishing. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Ren, we had such a busy weekend. Let's talk about what we did on Friday. That was a special day for you. We celebrated my birthday. What did we do? Wait, how old are you going to be? (laughs) Ten. No, did you forget? Or are you being silly? I am turning 13. Also wrong. Two. That's more like it. No, Ren, for her ninth birthday, which is actually not next week, but we had to schedule it this weekend just because of timing and such things. So we celebrated your ninth birthday with your friends. By doing... What? We went golfing. We had pizza. We did not go golfing. I mean, uh, bowling. We had pizza. We went to the ice ice cream cream. capital of the world. What kind of ice cream flavor did you get? Chocolate chip. Also, no. Do you remember at all what we did? (laughs) I got chocolate chip. You got mint chocolate chip. What? Oh my goodness. It was such a good day. You already forgot. Mm, I think I got too many brain (laughs) freezes. And then the next day, because Rennie and Brooks's birthdays are only four days apart, we celebrated Brooks's birthday. Brooks's birthday. But I had to go somewhere else to a different person's birthday. But you did get to be there for a part of it. So we had a weekend jam packed full of birthdays and celebrations. Which is so wonderful, and we're so thankful we got to do it with our family and friends. Do you want to get onto the podcast? I First, do. We need a joke of the week, though. Do you have one ready? What do you call cheese that's not yours? Nacho cheese. Nacho cheese. I love it. <laughs> Nacho birthday. <laughs> Except it almost is. <laughs> All right, should we go? Yep, let's just let's get this party started. Natural party. <laughs> Here's how the show works. Trivia for kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions. We have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round one. The category is airplanes. Question one. Who built the first successful airplane with an engine? Question two. What kind of airplane has two pairs of wings? One above the other. Question three, true or false? Airplanes cannot fly upside down. Question four, what is the name of the white lines that an airplane leaves in the sky? Entrails, contrails, or plane trails? Question five. Who was the first woman pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean? Question six. What kind of plane has floats instead of wheels? Q- 
Question seven. What is a person called who flies an airplane? And now the round one answers. Question one. Who built the first successful airplane with an engine? The Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur. Orville flew the flyer for 12 seconds in 1903. They were originally bicycle makers. 12 seconds doesn't seem like a long time, right? So when you hear it that doesn't. when you hear that they flew it for 12 seconds, you're like, "Well, big whoop." But back then, but like was... think about 12 seconds. 1 1000 I mean, pretty long. it actually ends up being pretty long to be able to stay in the air doing something. You know, like you can jump for 12 seconds. So when I first heard this answer, I was like, well, 12 seconds isn't a big deal. But that was kind of a big deal. So it was back then they didn't have like things to ride on. So yeah, it was difficult. Question two, what kind of airplane has two pairs of wings, one above the other? A biplane. So you've seen a biplane, right? No. It's kind of well. It's kind of like an old, like an old timey kind of plane, but it had parallel oh, wings. Is that what the Wright brothers mean? I think so, or at least a prototype of theirs was probably that. You know what? Don't quote me. I'm not a hundred percent sure. But a biplane, it has like two parallel wings, one on top of each other. So if you take your arms and like hold them like this, that's like how parallel lines. Right. One... That's how the biplane was. And then the cockpit and the engine were in the middle. I've seen that, yeah. I understand. Question three, true or false? Airplanes cannot fly upside down. False. Stunt planes often fly upside down, but pilots have to make sure that they are safely strapped in in order to stop them from falling out. So what have you read in your... Read, Quinn loves to read Ripley's Believe It or Not books or like... There's this guy from a long time ago who just went around the world and saw these amazing people who could do crazy stuff. Right, but what did you... You were just telling me about something that was crazy that somebody did as a stunt on an airplane. Um, they, they've they tried this before and they w were held onto an airplane by their hair. They did, they did stunts and he was just... Holding on by his hair yeah. to an airplane? Yeah. For more than 12 seconds? <laughs> I'm sure like 30, but then he dropped. <laughs> oh, dear. I hope he was wearing a parachute. Question four. What is the name of the white lines that an airplane leaves in the sky? Entrails, contrails, or plane trails? Contrails. Contrails are line-shaped clouds produced by aircraft engine exhaust or changes in air pressure, typically at aircraft cruising altitudes several miles above the Earth's surface. Contrails are composed primarily of water in the form of ice crystals. That's cool! Contrails are basically clouds formed by airplanes. Question five. Who was the first woman pilot to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean? Amelia Earhart. Boy, she was a tough woman back in those days. She was. I, this was in the early 1920s. And women, they couldn't do anything. You know, men. They were the sewers and the cookers. Right, exactly. Like, they <laughs> couldn't the do kid watchers. anything that the men could do. And Amelia Earhart said, no way, I want to be a pilot. And so she did. So you go, girl. And also, after her flight, she disappeared. And her and her plane, nobody ever saw. Yeah, I don't think it was this flight because she completed the first flight across the Atlantic and then she tried to do another flight. And unfortunately, why? I don't know. I think she just wanted to prove like, oh. she wanted to show everybody how awesome she was <clears throat> and prove that girls could do anything. Didn't she already? <laughs> well, I feel like some people sometimes when people, you know, achieve one goal, then they want to achieve another goal. And unfortunately, it didn't turn out so well for Amelia. But. She did prove that girls could do anything boys could do. Question six. What kind of plane has floats instead of wheels? Seaplanes. They have floats so they can take off and land on water. That's so cool. Do you suppose when old Orville and Wilbur were flying for 12 seconds, they thought, we could do this on water. We could stick a raft to the bottom of our boat and somehow <laughs> float. 
Question seven. What is a person called who flies an airplane? A pilot. Ding. This is your careless squeaking. Go put your seatbelt now. Usually pilots are kinder than that. Not this pilot. <laughs> Go put your seatbelt. Would you ever want to be a pilot? Do you have any desire to do that for a job? Or not even for a job, for like a hobby. I mean, that would be fun. It's just the, the weight of like 37 people's lives would be on my hands. That's true. It is a very, yeah, you have a lot of pressure on your job, don't you? My grandpa was a pilot. He was. He, not a commercial pilot, but he knew how to fly his own personal airplanes. Round two. The category is Ice Age, the movie. Question one. What kind of nut does Scrat try to bury? Question two. What type of animal is Diego? Question three. Finish the quote. Manny said, I'm not fat. It's all this hair. It makes me look blank. Question four. What is the name of the sloth? Question five. What is the name of Manny and Ellie's daughter? Question six. What did the human give to the mammoth? Question seven. How many Ice Age films have there been? And now the answers to round number two. Question one. What kind of nut does Scrat try to bury? Acorn. And boy, he does not give up on that acorn. There must not be many acorns back in the Ice Age because... You would think that after a while he'd be like, okay, forget that acorn. I'm going to go look for another one. But nope. He follows that thing through avalanches and storms and through icy water. And you want to know something I just realized? What? Do you think his name is Scrat? Because he's kind of a mix between a squirrel and a rat. He doesn't really look like a squirrel because his mouth is too long. But rats don't have huge mouths. Mouse. Yeah, they do, but they don't, rats don't have, rats have the big long noses, but they don't have the fluffy tails. So if he's a squirrel rat, his name could be Scrat. Oh! I, you think? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Question two. What type of animal is Diego? saber tooth tiger. What's unique about a saber tooth tiger? They're mixed with a cat and a scary animal. But they have what? What If you looked at a saber-toothed tiger, what looks different about them? They have very long teeth that go un- over their chin. Right. They have these long fang teeth that go like out of their mouth and down their chin, right? Question three. Finish the quote. Manny said, I'm not fat. It's all this hair. It makes me look... Poofy. Poofy. Question four. What is the name of the sloth? Sid. Question five. What is the name of Manny and Ellie's daughter? Peaches. Adorable name. <laughs> I think if I had a fish or a hamster, I'd name it Peaches. I know what. If you see one of the movies, it tells you why they named her Peaches. Because um, when Manny's wife was about to have the kid they had to think of something to say to tell them oh we're having a kid right now because she was about to have him have her and then she was thinking of what to say and she said peaches and then after that when they had the kid they're like why don't we name her something short and then he said peaches 
also it was like their code word for that she's in labor. So like if she was going to have the baby, she'd be like, peaches. And then he would know, oh, I got to get home. She's having the baby. Well, in the movie, she's not home. She's like on a rock with people watching her. Like Diego oh. watching her. I, I did not watch many of the Ice Age movies, so I don't know a ton about them. So thank you for that fact. Okay. Question six. What did the human give to the mammoth? A necklace. I didn't even know there were humans in the movie. So this question I had to ask if it was even true. You knew there were humans in the movie nope. talking. Nope. Yes, you did. The voices for the Well, animals. I knew that the voices were humans, but I didn't know there were humans in the movie. Are there? Not humans, they're like cavemen. Oh, well, I'm still humans. <laughs> Question seven. How many Ice Age films have there been? Five whole films. Which is your favorite of the five? I'm pretty sure you've seen them all. What are they? Ice Age, Ice Age, Continental Drift, Ice Age... Easter Egg Hunt. Easter Egg Hunt? Mm, that's one. Hmm. Are you sure that's not like an Easter special or something? I know it's on... It's. I know it's part of... And there's also Christmas ones. Oh, yeah, but those are just specials. Those aren't, like, oh, the yeah. actual yeah. feature yeah. films. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Round three. The category is space. Question one. During the Apollo 14 space mission, what did Alan Shepard play while on the moon's surface? Question two, what is the name of the object that is formed when a large star burns out and finally collapses in upon itself? Question three, what was the name of the landing module in the first historic landing on the moon Made by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Question four. What color does Mars appear in the night sky? Question five. How many stars... Make up the Big Dipper. Question six. From what direction do we see the sun rise? Question seven. The Earth's axis is tilted slightly. What change does this cause throughout the year? And now the answers to round number three. Question one. During the Apollo 14 space mission, what did Alan Shepard play while on the moon's surface? Golf. With only one-sixth of the Earth's gravity, Shepard said he was able to hit the golf balls for miles and miles and miles. Four! Watch out! <laughs> so, I thought this was, when I first read this question, I thought, there's no way that's true. That seems fake. But I read it, and sure enough, he played golf on the moon. He was apparently an avid golfer. Some people put golf balls on the moon. There are like seven of them. <laughs> well, Alan Shepard was apparently the first one. That's pretty cool. But the miles and miles and miles thing, that was him, I think, being sarcastic. Because I also read that really I think his balls only went like 27 feet or something like that. <laughs> That's still pretty far, though. Yeah. Question two. What is the name of the object that is formed when a large star burns out and finally collapses in upon itself? A black hole. A black hole in space is not really a hole at all. It's the remains of a giant star in the universe, 
much bigger than our sun that have come to an end of their lifespan, burned out, and then collapsed in upon themselves. Like a balloon that slowly loses its air and shrivels up into this tiny little thing, a black hole continues to shrivel further and becomes so extremely compacted that no light can escape it at all. Hence the name Black Hole. I still don't get it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you lost me there. I know. You know, I I feel like the explanation makes sense, you know, so it's a it's a yeah, star, it's a star that, that burns out and then the hole collapses upon itself. I don't know if it it's makes like a, a giant hole that like a sucks suction up stuff. vacuum. Yeah. It just keeps collapsing and sucking stuff into it. And so there's no light that can get in. And so it's just a big black hole. Have you heard of those tests that people do before they go into the spaceship to get trained? Are they really hard? Yeah. You like have to get pushed. Like it goes oh, super fast in a you circle mean, and you have to get yes. pushed against the chair. You don't so mean hard. like a test where you have to answer questions. No. You mean like a gravity test. Yes. Where they spin you into multiple G forces and Yeah, that oh man, that wouldn't be fun. I wouldn't be And I, then you'd have to go through it again once you left Earth. And then you'd land on the moon, you'd be like, I'm here. You'd have to leave, be like, oh, I get motion sick on a Ferris wheel. I would not be a good astronaut. I don't think there's enough Dramamine or motion sickness pills in the world that would make me not throw up after those tests. <laughs> just, just get your paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. What was the name of the landing module in the first historic landing on the moon made by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin? Eagle. So I kind of thought that when the astronauts landed on the moon, the whole space shuttle landed on the moon. But that's not true. So the space shuttle's in the atmosphere, and then this lunar module shoots off the space shuttle, and that's what takes the astronauts to the moon. So that little lunar module, its name was Eagle. Question four. What color does Mars appear in the night sky? Red. Have you heard of Mars being called the red planet? Yeah, that's because of all like the iron and dust that floats around on its surface. You got it. Question five. How many stars make up the Big Dipper? Eight. This was kind of a trick question. Seven are visible at glance. Well, the eighth is a visible double star. That is just detectable with the naked eye in an area with clear seeing and with good vision. Yeah, so it is eight. And I'll have to we'll have to look the next time we see the Big Dipper. Because apparently there's a double star on one of them. Does that mean they're, they're connected or one is like close to another? Yeah, I think one's so close to the other that it looks like they're one star unless you're paying attention to see that they're two. Question six. From what direction do we see the sun rise? The east. For us on Earth, the sun rises in the east and then sets in the west. However, the sun does not really move at all. It is the Earth that is rotating that makes the sun appear to be in a different place in the sky. Question 7. The Earth's axis is slightly tilted. What change does this cause throughout the year? The change in seasons. Throughout the year, Different parts of the Earth receive the sun's most direct rays. So when the North Pole tilts toward the sun, it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere. And when the South Pole tilts toward the sun, it's winter in the Northern Hemisphere. So, do you know what the axis is? Uh, think of a line through the Earth. Right. Sort of like if you stuck, I don't know, a drum, yeah. a drumstick or a pin right through the top of the Earth to the bottom, right in the middle. That's the axis, and it's slightly tilted. And because of this tilt, when the Earth rotates, it causes different seasons based on how the sun hits the Earth. That's interesting. Crazy interesting. Round number four. The category is arcades. Question one. What is the full name of Chuck E. Cheese?
Question two. In what game are small metal balls shot across a sloping board and score points by striking various targets? Question three. What classic arcade game featured Mario trying to save Pauline from an angry ape? Question four. In what game do players attempt to knock a plastic disc into their opponent's goal across a specially designed table that produces a cushion of air to reduce friction? Question five. What Disney movie takes place in an arcade and an arcade game? Question six. What game is played by rolling a ball up an inclined lane and over a ball hop hump that jumps the ball into bullseye rings? Question seven. True or false? Mario and Luigi are twins. And now the answers for round four. Question one: What is the full name of Chuck E. Cheese? Charles Entertainment Cheese. This is one of Dan and I's favorite trivia questions. Did you know that Chuck E. Cheese that the E stood for entertainment? No. Do you think when he introduces himself to people, he says, "Hello, I am Charles Entertainment Cheese." Is his last name che- Cheese? Yeah. Is he a mouse? Yes. Question two: In what game are small metal balls shot across a sloping board and score points by striking various targets? Pinball. You like to play pinball. Remember we went to that one restaurant and they had the pinball machines and you hit the buttons on the sides and then it hits the paddles and oh, then it right, knocks right, the balls right, and right. it goes no, bing, 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 bing. I'm not any good at pinball, but it is fun. Mm-hmm. Question three: What classic arcade game featured Mario trying to save Pauline from an angry ape? Donkey Kong. Who is Pauline? In the game Donkey Kong, Pauline was like the Princess Peach version, like an early princess, but her name was Pauline.、Mm. Have you ever seen Donkey Kong? No. So it was an early game, and what it looked like was. Have you ever seen a worm farm where there's all kinds of tunnels? Yeah. Yeah. So Mario started at the bottom, and he had to go across and jump over something, and then he had to climb up a ladder onto the next level, and then go across and up and across and up. And when he got to the top, was this angry ape named Donkey Kong, and he had to defeat Donkey Kong. And then the princess was in like a jailed cage up in the corner, and if he、hmm. defeated Donkey Kong, he got to save Pauline. Huh. Question four: In what game do players attempt to knock a plastic disc into their opponent's goal across a specially designed table that produces a cushion of air to reduce friction? Air hockey. You just played air hockey on your birthday, but it was not on, so there was no friction. <laughs> it was just slide past a flat table hockey. Not nearly as fun, right? Because your old still pretty fun. Because your old mom wouldn't penny up the quarters to play、It's、the.、Fine. You did not have no, to. No, we had fun anyway doing other things. Question five: What Disney movie takes place in an arcade and an arcade game? Wreck It Ralph. Great movie. We need to have a Wreck It Ralph category, don't we?、Mm-hmm. I love that movie. And what's Wreck It Ralph's sidekick's name? Isn't that Vanellope? Yeah. Or you could say Fix It Felix. You're right. But... Vanellope. I think that's such a cool name. 
Question six. What game is played by rolling a ball up an inclined lane and over a ball hop hump that jumps the ball into bullseye rings? Ski ball. Do you like playing ski ball? I've never played it. Yes, you have. have. So it's that machine. So it it has a lane and then the big wooden ball. Oh, yeah. Clump, 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 clump. And then you pick the ball up and you oh, yeah. roll it up and then it bounces into the, the different um, holes with the points. And there's like 50 in the middle and a 10 on the outside of the 50. Yes, and then there's the hundreds in the, the corners. And then like four, 20 on the bottom. And then it keeps track, of, like it keeps adding up your points as you make them in the holes. That's called ski ball. Mm -hmm. And that is in Chuck E. Cheese, so. Well, there you, that is in Charles Entertainment Cheese's house. <laughs> <laughs> Question seven, true or false, Mario and Luigi are twins. True. This one blew my mind. Did you know Mario and Luigi were twins? A little, but Mario looks way fatter than Luigi. Well, and Luigi looks taller. Right. They're fraternal twins, it said, not identical twins. So, but I just thought they were brothers. I did not know they were twins. Round five. The category is birds. Question one. Which bird of prey has been clocked at 242 miles per hour, earning the title of the fastest bird in the world? Question two. Which bird shares its name with a shade of red and a St. Louis baseball team. Question three. What is the second largest bird still in existence after its relative, the ostrich? Question four. What kind of bird is blue in the movie Rio? Question five. What do chickens eat to help them digest their food? Question six. What is the name of the seabird? that stores its food in its mouth until it's ready to be eaten. Question seven. What Australian bird is known for its wild laughter and has a famous song about it living in the old gum tree? And now the answers to round five. Question one, which bird of prey has been clocked at 242 miles per hour, earning the title of the fastest bird in the world? The peregrine falcon. Technically, the peregrine falcon only holds the airspeed record while in a hunting high-speed dive. When it's normally flying, it flies at a speed of about 68 miles per hour. And there are a number of birds that can do that better. Question two. Which bird shares its name with a shade of red and a baseball team from St. Louis? The Cardinals. And it just so happens that my mom loves the Cardinals. Go Cards! I was going to say that and you, and, and you said it for me. So thank you. I lived in St. Louis. Dan and I met in St. Louis. So I'm a big St. Louis Cardinal fan. Does dad like St. Louis? No, he's a Cubs fan, which is okay, too. Question three. What is the second largest bird still in existence after its relative, the ostrich? An emu. I don't know much about emus. Ostriches have white heads and black feathered bodies. And then the emu has, like, gray heads and black feathered bodies, I think it is. Question four. What kind of bird is blue in the movie Rio? Spix's macaw. But a study released that the Brazilian bird is now extinct in the wild. However, 
There are 160 in captivity. Phew! So some of them are kept in zoos and that stuff? Yeah, so in the wild, sad, but there are no Spix's macaws that live, I don't know, in trees. Oh, I read that they were, um, what's that word that we talked about? Apex. No. <laughs> that lemurs were to Madagascar. Endemic. There we go. I don't think I was there for that. That was might have been Ren's category, but the Spix's macaw are, are endemic to Brazil, so they only live in Brazil. But there aren't any in the wild. So, yes, if there are, there are about 160 still living, but they're in captivity, whether that's a zoo or a sanctuary or, I don't know, someone's basement. I don't or know. Or in homes in the library, like in the movie Rio. <laughs> True. Question five. What do chickens eat to help them digest their food? Small rocks or stones. Yeah, chickens eat rocks. As they are pecking on the ground for food, Chickens do eat gravel, which also is known as grit. Because they do not have teeth to break the food into smaller pieces, the gravel helps them to grind up and digest their food. Chickens eat their food whole, and the particles that are still too big for them to eat go to their gizzard, where, aided by the grit, they are further broken down. Sounds like you have teeth in your stomach. Kind of, exactly. <laughs> Question six. What is the name of the seabird that stores its food in its mouth until it's ready to be eaten? Pelican. There's a friendly one in Finding Nemo where he just keeps the Nemo and Dory in his in his Gullet, beak. Right? Yeah. Um, and dumps them out in this tank. I was that's exactly what I was thinking. When I think of Pelican, I think of I think that of, one in I think Finding of Nemo. Dory in the Pelican's mouth. Where he's like, climb in my mouth, and I don't remember what he says. Yeah, I don't either. Question seven. What Australian bird is known for its wild laughter and has a famous song about it living in the old gum tree? Kookaburra. And my mom hates the song. Kookaburra lives in an old gum tree. Uh, Mary Mary came from the bushes. He love cookaberry love cookaberry gay your life for me. Wait, I don't know the word. Is that the word? So let me let me answer this for myself. I don't hate the song. It's a fine song. Kookaburra loving she Australian people. Is not annoying. Dan Quinn's dad thinks it's hilarious to sing this song over and over and over again, and he sings it in a way that drives me crazy. And so when I've heard it 75 times, sung in an annoying voice, I've tended to not like the song any longer. And now it's time for the final exam. Now remember, you've heard these questions in the previous rounds, but these were the hardest ones we've had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question one, who built the first successful airplane with an engine? The Wright Brothers. Question two, what is the name of the object that is formed when a large star burns out and collapses in upon itself? Black hole. Question three, what is the full name of Chuck E. Cheese? Charles Entertainment Cheese. Question four. Which bird of prey has been clocked at 242 miles per hour, earning the title of the fastest bird in the world? Peregrine Falcon. Question five. What is the name of the white lines that an airplane leaves in the sky? Contrails. Question six. How many Ice Age films have there been? Five. Question seven. What is the name of the seabird that stores its food in its mouth until it is ready to be eaten? Pelican. And that's it from us, folks. Thank you so much again for listening. It has been our pleasure to bring you episode 21 this week. 
Thanks for sticking with us. Hey, you guys know what would be so cool? Even if you don't have an idea for a category or some questions, we would love to hear where you guys are listening from. Because a couple of times we've gotten emails about category ideas from listeners and they'll say, I'm from, we had one from Washington, D.C. and we had one from Georgia. And we live in Iowa, so we would just love to hear where you guys are listening from because, yeah, we think it's so cool. So we also like category ideas if you have any of those. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who are done with school for the year, great job on getting through it. And congratulations on summer. Quinn and Ren have uno mas. One Uh, more to go. I am so done with school. I love I love my teachers, and I have so many great friends, but it's, yeah, it's not even fun anymore. Get me summer, right? Yep. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. And if you have a question idea or even an entire category, please email us at Trivia for Kids Podcast at gmail.com.